Uh, with me now is former government minister and someone who acquitted herself brilliantly in the jungle, Edwina Curry. That was in 2014. And our jungle insider live from Australia, exclusively for GB News, Ben Leo. Uh, folks, great to have both of you with me. First of all, Maria, have you got those images yet? Because these are the exclusive first photographs of Nigel doing his first challenge before he gets into the jungle. Take a look at this. So there's Nigel attempting some kind of challenge. He doesn't look like he's enjoying it. He's wearing his goggles. His fancy pink shirt is covered in stains and soiled slightly. I think we might have another image. There you go. There's, there's Nigel with one of his camp mates. And they're both embarked on this disgusting challenge. He's a uh, waist high in rather disgusting water. And there's Nigel's head in a VW camper van. Assume, I'm assuming there that he's trying to fish out some kind of uh, treasure to bring to the camp mates. So, uh, Edwina, before I come to you, Ben Leo, do we know what Nigel's been up to in that first challenge? Hello, Mark. We don't know the full extent of what he's been up to, but we do know that for the first time ever in Armour Celeb history, they shipped Nigel 2,000 miles away to Australia's Northern Territory, which is the outback to me and you, scorching 40 degree heat. Um, for a junk and slime challenge. ITV said that he's been wading through gallons of disgusting sludge and what they call hell holes. And that picture you just showed there of him looking revolted, I mean, it's as if he's learned that Brexit's been reversed and Alison Campbell's been made Prime Minister or something. It had me in stitches this morning. And actually, it's a sign of things to come. Does Nigel know what he's got himself into? Judging by that picture, I don't think he does. Edwina, you were there. You've got the T-shirt. Can you tell us what's going through Nigel's mind at the moment? Is it deep regret? Um, I should think he's a, a bit bewildered by everything that's happening. I tell you what, uh, I'm a celebrity. Originally, the very first series was shot up near Darwin and it was too hot for the crew. Uh, so all the what they had to do was decide no they couldn't do that there in future and have to do it somewhere more, more reasonable close to Brisbane. Uh, so the environment is actually very pleasant around there. Um, I'm sure he's settling in very nicely, probably trying to avoid getting bitten by uh, bugs of one kind or another, including the ones that aren't thrown at you. I mean, nature there is fairly fairly determined, as uh, as is indeed the food, which is awful and not very much of it. Uh, he'll start off, I think, really quite uh, excited. But after a while, it really starts to get you down. I can't wait till you're in it, Mark. I think you would be brilliant. Oh, listen, they couldn't afford me, Edwina. Uh, ben Leo, you know Nigel pretty well, and I think you were close to that story when it was emerging that he would go into the jungle. You kept Sturm, you kept your counsel very well. Uh, what's your impression of Nigel's body language from those images? Do you think he's enjoying it? It, it doesn't look like he's enjoying it, no. Uh, but to be fair to him, before he went into the jungle, he was saying that he's game for anything. You know, mm. he's, he's dealt with the rats of Westminster, with <laughs> the snakes of the European Parliament. What could some critters in the Australian jungle do to him? So he was pretty bullish and pretty confident about his stint in the jungle. But like I said, just seeing that one picture of him looking absolutely revolted maybe makes me think, you know, oh, does he know what he's really got himself in for? Well, he, he, he better get used to it because he's got three whole weeks of this. And as ITV's star man, a rumoured one and a half million pound fee, a record, by the way, for the series, you're going to suspect that he's going to be doing trials day in, day out. So, Nigel, get used to it. It's going to be a hell of a time. It's going to be extremely entertaining for the likes of me and you, and even for his haters as well, who hate him for Brexit, can't forgive him for yanking us out of the EU. I'm sure they're going to be bashing those phones, getting him to do every trial possible. What's the biggest challenge, Edwina? Is Nigel going to need mental or physical strength? Well, he's going to find himself deprived of all sorts of things. Uh, that, I think, is going to be tough. There's no coffee, no cigarettes, no salt, no pepper. Uh, there, there's no spices. Your food just tastes absolutely awful. Um, no phones, of course, no contact with the outside world. And that can be re really rather disorientating in the sense that you have no idea what impact you're having on the outside world. 
you become a performer just for the dozen or so people that you're in there with. And I'd like to bet some of them are going to thoroughly enjoy themselves by goading him and trying to get him to lose his temper, trying to get him to be aggressive. Uh, we, we, we will find out what kind of man he really is in real life. Uh, you know, it's absolute catnip for 11 million people on this side of the uh, the pond. We can't wait to watch it. Absolutely brilliant choice for ITV. Ben, Nigel, before he actually uh, confirmed that he was going to be on I'm a Celebrity, he told me on this programme that he'd like to reach out to a younger audience. Do you think that this appearance on I'm a Celebrity will be a recruiting sergeant to the Brexit cause and possibly drum up more support for the political right? Oh, absolutely. 100 percent. Nigel said to me before he went in, 10 million people viewed the series last year at its peak. That's when Matt Hancock was in. And arguably, Nigel is more popular than Hancock. So this series could really eclipse those beautiful figures, all of which are 18 to 35 year olds, mostly. So for Nigel, um, if he wants to get back into politics and he wants to scoop up the mess of the, the Tory party when they are likely annihilated at the next election by Labour, this is a great chance for him to tap into those 10 million plus uh, swathes of the electorate who maybe wouldn't have given him a chance before. So not only is it a great earner for Nigel personally, a couple of quid in the bank, he, he can also set up and mould the foundations for his big political return. So, yeah, lots of opportunities and, and exponential advantages for him on this front. As Edwina said, though, the only risk is without the booze, um, without the, the caffeine and the limited cigarette breaks, is that going to push him over the edge where, you know, his spicy side comes out and he puts viewers off? That's the risk. But as we know, Mark, Nigel is genuinely a, a charming and very pleasant guy. So I think that risk is pretty small. Do you think, Edwina, there's a natural journey from King of the Jungle to number 10? <laughs> well, it's at least possible. And I have no doubt that what we heard is just right, that actually Nigel thinks that that is going to be a possibility. But there are a number of other hurdles he'd have to get through first. I mean, the first is he's actually got to do well in the jungle and not make a complete fool of himself. George Galloway probably thought the same thing when he did Big Brother. And you remember how that ended. Uh, then he's got to get himself a parliamentary seat because you're nobody if you're not actually in Parliament. He's got to not only get one, but unlike the seven previous times he's tried for Westminster, he'd actually have to win it. And, you know, seriously, if he wanted to make any kind of impact, he would have to be a member of one of the big parties. I can't see Keir Starmer welcoming him. And I really don't think that the Conservatives would either. But who knows? You know, we've had a very busy week in politics. It's been astonishing. Anything could happen. Well, there you go. What a, what a set of wise words that is. Uh, ben, we're going to be on air a lot together for the next few weeks because my shows often start at 10 or we're on air at 10 o'clock, which is when I'm a Celebrity comes off air. So tell me about your role. You are our definitive and exclusive jungle insider, aren't you? Well, look, Mark, it's one of those jobs in journalism where, you know, nobody wants to do it. It's, uh, it's a formidable job, but someone's got to do it. You know, I left England <laughs> when it was the depths of winter and it was raining and it was dark. And it's the height of summer out here, as you can see. Um, I've, already, I've already got a bit of a tan on the go from just one day some work of sunbathing. But anyway, my job here on the ground will be reporting on Nigel's progress, every cock and bit of his activity in the jungle, and also... When his friends and family arrive, trying to grab some exclusive interviews with them to see how he's getting on. And, yeah, just follow his journey from, from start to finish in what is a historic signing for ITV and The Jungle. Most definitely. We'll look forward to uh, your coverage for the next few weeks. Edwina, thank you so much. We'll catch up soon. Uh, brilliant stuff.